Okay, then uh, yeah, hello, welcome everyone to the 13th Sasensei International Dojo SID event. We're really happy to have Bartosz um, presenting today on the SAS packages. And without further ado, over to you. Hello everyone, uh, good to have you here on the SID 13. Um, funny thing, because uh, you can see the title is the SAS packages State of the Union. And I just, you know, when, when uh, Alan asked me a few weeks ago how to title the, the, the presentation. I said, okay, let's do it. That's packages State of the Union. And then when I was preparing slide, I realized that we have tomorrow, we have um, Independence Day in, in Poland. So basically State of the Union discussion just the day before the Independence Day in the Poland might be quite quite nice coincidence here. Uh, so yeah, let's 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 jump with the with the subject. So uh, yeah, first of all, also Polish SAS user group. <laughs> uh, uh, don't 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 uh, don't forget to visit the web page. Don't don't forget to check out the LinkedIn pro not LinkedIn profile but link, LinkedIn group, and you know, sign in yourself to Polsuk. It's not limited only for Polish programmers, SAS programmers. So so check it out. Uh, and now let's go with the with the topic. So basically, uh, you know the drill. R has packages uh, with CTAN, uh, with the CRAN. Uh, Python has packages with PyPy. Uh, tech community, they've got packages with the CTAN. Uh, SAS community somehow doesn't have packages. I mean, uh, why, and the question, question is why we cannot have them. Well, in fact, we, we can. We we are able to have them. And uh, packages in the, in the term of uh, way of easy sharing your, your code, the, 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 the thing you developed with others, right? Because now the, you, you, maybe you had a chance to see this, this slide a few times earlier, but let me repeat this one more time. So automatically generated single standalone zip, uh, containing organized uh, code or prepared by developers plus some additional um, driving structure which keeps the order of, of loading and uh, working with the with, with the with the um, with the code with, which is inside uh, the idea was that the, the, this will be a zip file and named as a zip file on purpose so everyone know that it's not some hidden or uh, um strange uh, thing like uh when you have enterprise guide egp file which is a zip in, fa in fact right you can unzip it and check out the the content right or, or you've got the spk packages right they, they they're also zip files in, 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 inside but the, you know the ending was not zip so it wasn't that obvious and so in this case the, my idea was make it just name it just as it is uh, and what it is inside and the, the, the idea is instead of sharing like 20 or 30 files with the, with the programs, with the functions, uh, formats, uh, data, macros, or whatever with your user when you create it, you can just put it, wrap it up in a package, share one single file, and, and says to users, uh, to, to users which, with which you are sharing it, okay, take this file, use the framework, load the package, and then you can work with it. And um, since the, the structure is organized inside in the way you as a developer want to have it. Basically, you are able to ensure that user will also load up the function in the proper orders, formats in the proper order. So there will be like no situation that user is getting back to you saying, okay, this function is not working for me. And when you look into the log, you will see that the function is not working because the, the format which was required inside the function wasn't yet loaded, right? So that's the... That was the idea, and on the other side, like 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 when you are a user, just basically you are taking one file, you putting it into the packages folder, and just say load package, and you go with the content, right? You can use it without any problems. Uh, and yeah, and uh, this disclaimer here that uh, it's not the it's not the IML package because basically the word package exists in 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 the SaaS world in multiple places, so it's not uh, IML package, it's not DS2 package. Uh, it's not the the uh, ODS package. It's not the the SPK or EGP file. This is like something totally different. So that's that's the idea of the package. And you know, to to be able to work with them, uh, you need well, in, <laughs> uh, you you can use uh, you can use the framework. Um, the, the another little 
disclaimer, there is a possibility to use packages without the framework, but this so-called uh, ICE, so uh, in case of emergency. So if, if you have a package and you don't, don't have a framework at hand, there is a like, official way of using, uh, at least loading the package content without, without it, but that's for, for like special cases. On a regular basis, you basically, you basically take the, the, the framework and use it for, 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 for your purpose. So from the user point of view, well, here, here, here is the, the list of the, the macros which are contained in the framework and which are building, right? I called it a, like a pack of macros. So we've got 10, 10 macros, nine of them are dedicated for users. The 10th one is dedicated for developer. You, if you'll be developing a, a package, you basically will be using probably all of them, right? But the, uh, uh, from, from the dev developer point of view, the 10th the one is, is the core. So what they are doing, the, the first one is giving you information about what sort of packages you have on your machine. So it's listing you the, the con contents of, of your packages folder. Uh, the second one allows you to install the package from the internet because basically installing a package is just downloading the, the file with the package into, on, on your machine and putting it into a, a directory which is pointed by the packages uh, file name. Uh, verify package. Uh, this macro is, uh, is useful because someone can handle you a package which is looking like the proper, proper value one, but he or she uh, do, did something inside the package and then wrap it up again in the zip uh, and, and share, share, share this modified zip with you. And so if you want to verify that the zip wasn't modified uh, modified according to the like, official version, um, there's, there's uh, um, checks uh, available for, for each package which was generated and you are able to compare the the file with this checksum and the, this macro gives you information that this this this, this particular package is, is valid and you can use it um, without any problems. Then uh, when you have your package installed and verified, uh, before you start to use it, you can uh, read the help of your package. You can use this help package macro to extract the help from the from with what's inside. Basically, help is printed out in the log, so you can just write help package and the package name and you will get the general overview of, of, of the help information in the in the log and but when you add second argument um, with the name of a particular element of the of the of the package you have you will get information help information dedicated for that particular one uh, and then since I said uh, I want to, it to be trans as transparent as possible uh, some sometimes when you when you uh, get the zip file, you you have to do like a lot of stuff. Well, maybe not like a lot of stuff, but you have to do some stuff to unzip it, check it, checks checks out what's inside. With the preview pack preview package, you basically put the package name, and then after the comma, uh, you put the name of the element you want to preview, and the, all the code which 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 is inside the 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 file with the particular element is printed out into the log so we can easily see what's in the in this particular function macro or, or whatever so it's fully transparent and it's just you know one liner in in your in your sas which which prints out everything in, in into the log uh, then the load package when you finally uh, when when you install your package verified it you you read the help how to use it now you are able to use it start to use it so you are using the load package Macro. There are two versions of this this macro. One is called load package, and the other is load packages with s at the end. So the first one is the dedicated for for loading like a single package. It contains some additional parameters which allows you to mo modify the the process of loading the package, like required version or something like this. And the load packages with the s at the end allows you to uh, uh, load multiple packages uh, with one command. So basically, you write load packages. First package, comma, second package, comma, third package, comma, bracket, and then you, you go with the, with the loading. So when you loaded your package, you did your job, you did your analysis, you did your data processing, whatever the, the, the package was, was needed for. And you want to clean up the session. So you basically run the unload package and all the content provided by the package you have uh, is, is cleaned up, right? Uh, so all the, all the process is done. And now thing is that uh, it's very convenient, um, for, especially from the server oriented point of view that the administrator will provide the session with the packages reference 
So, so point reference pointing to some folder on the server in which the administrator put all the all the packages available for you as a user and the framework itself, uh, and then add it to this I don't know wor workspace server uh, um, uh, auto exec file the the, the 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 those two lines which enables the framework. Uh, but sometimes it may happen that there is there are some packages which are not yet installed on the server and you have it in your home directory and you you want to add it to the to the list of available packages so basically you can use this nine macro named extended um, extend package file ref uh, which basically allows you to in, increase the list of the of the directories which are used by the um, uh, by, by, by the framework so the places where the framework is look, looking for for the packages files uh, yeah and the, the final one generate package this is from for, for developer as I said so if you want to create your uh, your own package is basically using this one to to do it um I'm not going into details how to how to um, build package because uh, um, it's it's easily available uh, on the net uh, uh if you go to the uh github of the sas packages framework so github.com slash yabon slash sas packages i will repeat this this link uh, address in, in a minute uh so if you if you go to basically if you if you type in the google or or whatever search engine you are looking if you type github and sas underscore packages it should direct you to this, this particular uh repository and if you scroll down a few lines there is a list of uh, recordings from other conferences on, 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 during which I was uh, presenting the idea. So if you want to know how to build your own, own package, you can check out this one from SAS Global Forum 2021, during which I'm uh, explaining how to build a package. And there's, uh, I think, the, the most recent uh, one about how to use the framework is the one from the basic uh, um, webinar which was in November 2020 so so all the stuff is, is available here um right so 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 some some additional resources and uh okay so we basically know what's what's the package what what the framework contains so mm, what's happened since since the November 11 2021 because basically you're doing sta state of the union after one year of uh, happening right so we had 11 new releases of the framework uh, and the last one was uh, earlier this week because I found the uh, one place in the log which was displayed from the from the process of package generation that it does it doesn't look very very good and I and I modified it so the last last release was a tiny one but you know I, I did some log aesthetics uh, the, among the macros which are which I'm also generating with the framework macro array. Uh, package grown to version 1.0, base plus grown to um, uh, 1.17, and GSM grown to version 0 0.2. And the last thing, which I think the most important one, is that uh, I finally uh, set up um, something uh, which is looking like a um, rep packages repository which uh, R is using so cron or uh, PyPy for uh, for Python or uh, Ctan for for text so basically we are a, we, we have a github um, this github uh, organization uh, which is called saspack and it keeps sas packages with all the version control and stuff like this uh, and history and I will show you uh, all the data details in, in one sec uh, yeah and one thing uh, October 13th We've got our third, the, the, the official uh, SAS packages framework repository uh, had its uh, third birthday. Uh, I realized that a few days ago when I was checking out the um, uh, commits tree uh, on my GitHub uh, for, the, for, for, for this one. And I saw that uh, October 13th, we had our third per third. Uh, birthday. Uh, I started working on on the, on the framework a bit earlier, like a four or five months before the October um, 2019. But the official uh, first official release was uh, October 13th. Uh, so basically, uh, uh, C13 and uh, October 13th. I'm meeting here to, today to get together. I may say.
Yeah, and uh, I said uh, that the, 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 there were three packages which which uh, uh, which developed during this year. So brief brief uh, intro what what what's happened. So basically, uh, with macro array, uh, we've got three new um, macros within the package. One is called sort macro array, and the, another is called MC hash table and MC dictionary. So basically, those two, those last two, they are mi mimicking the hash table for macro for macro variables and uh, Python the uh, Python uh, dictionary uh, for 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 macro variables. I won't go into details for this one because it will be like a good topic for like separate a separate meeting uh, here. Uh, so if you if if you think that it's worth doing something like like separate meeting for for macro array package we can do it later uh then the next one base plus a uh, few few additional macros added some bug fix fixes uh, and uh i also want to go into the details about uh, base plus because uh, during this last sas explore conference uh, uh i i had a presentation about it uh, it's available on sas communities Basically, if you go to home, explore presentations, and then you look for a base plus package for SAS, there is recording from the from the presentation. Uh, so you can see all the details about what's going on with the base plus package in, in that presentation. Uh, then uh, GSM. Uh, so the, the GSM is short for uh, generate secure macros. Uh, there, 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 there were basically uh, some minor changes inside because the, the package is contains contains basically two macros, but uh, there were some changes inside the, the um, those macros, some refactoring. Um, I also won't go into detail because for this one, uh, there is a presentation from uh, uh, from this conference. Um, po it's Polish conference, SAS for administrators and practitioners. So for those of you who 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 can handle Polish language, you can you can see the the this. Um, uh, this recording here, uh, and uh, for those who who can't, if you if you would like, I can I can organize one one uh, one for you, so you can uh, you you can see what this GSM package is. Uh, but that's again like for for, for like another meeting, because it's really hard to to do it within like next twenty minutes. Uh, so that's the, that's the packages uh, and. Uh, framework itself so the last release is from from uh november 7th and what was the most common thing modified through this last year it was bug fixing so i uh I had several bug fixes um for this code and uh, it's quite natural that we are fixing fixing issues and then the uh since uh, we have this cooperation with alan about uh, SASJS um, uh, server. Uh, the, the the original framework is contained within one file, so it will be easier for 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 you to download it and use it. Um, but for the for for the SASJS server, uh, we decided to create uh, to to split the the, the file with the, with the framework into separate list of separate files with separate macros, so Alan could um, embed them into auto exec. Uh, not auto exec, but um, SAS autos uh, folder for the for the server. So whenever you are starting SASJS server, the the framework is already available for you. Uh, whenever you you call one of the macros from the uh, from the framework, they are searched in the in SAS autos and then compiled, and you can use them. So that was the little change. And uh, then the this extend package file ref uh, that was new, something new that that was added. Uh, to the framework and uh, with the with this macro also this feature that FileRef can point into several different directories at one time uh, for the framework to look for the for the packages because before the um, this modification basically the idea uh, was that pa packages file name was pointing into one single directory in which you 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 have to you had to put uh, all your packages and the framework itself. And now you can have um, you have multi, you can have multiple directories. So framework can be in one directory. Uh, some packages can be in in the other, and some other packages can be in, in the third one, and so on. So on. basically, you are able to 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 extend the list of location when you when you have um, 
uh, your package is stored and the extend package file ref uh, macro allows you to to do it very easy uh, i will show you in a few seconds how to how to do it uh, and then the generate package uh, macro there were a few a few updates uh, so basically uh, there are some additional quality checks for for because when you are creating a package you are putting it into a particular structure and then the, the macro is executed on this on this prepared um, content uh, so additional check were, were added to the to, to the macro so we can verify if all the driving files are prepared uh, and generated uh, if the um, uh, required components list are uh, properly for, proper, properly formatted this delayed test work parameter was added basically this this one is because uh, when you are running uh generate package macro at the end of the macro there's a, a whole part dedicated for running a test so if you want to do some additional test on your package you just create a test folder you put it into the folder with the with the content of the of the package and the framework is running the content of that folder file by file and execute it and uh, basically you, you can get the get the, the the test done for for your package uh, but uh, it it's so in the way that the generate package uh, starts like child sessions from 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 within the, your main session and uh, for each file in the test folder uh, there is separate session and that separate session has its own work uh, within which the, the, the data can be uh, executed uh, but when when the the side session with the test is ending the, the work naturally is cleared uh, but this del test work parameter allows you to keep the, those works so whenever you want to do some additional examination additional debugging you you, you, have, you have all the data from the processes uh, from, from the testing process kept in, in, in that in that work if, if you need um some additional uh, log aesthetics uh, readability improvements so basically you are now able when you're scrolling the log from the process of packet generation you can see which element of the process are done when uh it's easy easy to to see it um uh, up to like two months ago um the, the the idea for the package was that the package version need to be a number so uh 1.5 or whatever but uh, i uh, i modified this approach now we can use the standard uh programming approach when you have my ma major ver version ma minor version and then after the the the, the patch or for the corporate so you can have uh, you don't all, you don't have to have a package like uh with the version like 1.5 but you can have 1.5.3 or something so basically this the standard which is which is used in in, in uh code development is is it's it's here uh quality checks for execs and clean type uh, one of the types of the of, of the code you can embed into the package was the, those exec and clean times types uh, exec means that uh, whatever is in the uh, in in in, in uh, a code file in that exec type folder will be executed when this package is um, is uh, generated and uh, not generated but um, loaded into the user session uh, and uh, since uh, exec can can contain like an arbitrary code for example creating a data set or function or or macro or or whatever uh, for, for for whatever reason not embedded into standard type like macro function format data library and so on uh, you need to put it into exec for some reason um, the, the, the framework cannot assume um, how 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 the content created by this particular file um should be cleaned up at the end because basically when you have a um, element of type uh, macro or a function basically framework is, is able to uh, uh, remove the macro remove the function uh, delete the format right from your session but for, for that exec it's not it's not that trivial so basically now the the the, the quality check assumes that whenever you create an exec file type uh, then you have to have a uh, file type uh, clean file type which basically contain code which is cleaning up after the the exec uh, exec file um at the at the uh, un, uh, during the unload process well and the, the final thing since since some ch change some, there were some changes in the in the process so it had to be documented so the documentation was was updated that's for generate package and um, the second major major thing was uh, improvement in the install package macro 
uh, three things. Uh, two new par parameters, first called uh, mirror, which basically indicates the location from which you can uh, download the, the packages uh, for you. Uh, the, the first the, the first uh, standard location for the for for the for the packages at least those which which I was providing uh, was this uh, um, this this SAS packages repository. There is a subdirectory called packages, and all, all those packages which which I'm creating and then developing are stored here. So basically, you were able to download them from 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 this place using this install package uh, macro, but. Uh, uh, it happened that few of my colleagues were not able to access the uh, the GitHub web page uh, from from within some net, because of some network settings, but they were able to to uh, reach out the Warsaw University of Technology uh, web page. The Faculty of Mathematics and Information Science had had the servers web server which which we, on which I was able to put like a copy of the repository so so this is like alternative source and and now uh finally when we when we added this uh saspack um repository dedicated for the for for for, for, for the packages this is the the the, the primary uh location of, from from which the the um, the packages uh, can be downloaded uh par version parameter allows you to uh call for a particular version of the package which you want to have on your on your um uh, on your computer uh, which which you want to install uh, this is uh, limited to to this uh, sas pack repository because this is the only one which keeps the packages history and versioning uh, and then uh, the, the final step is the, the the latest modification that you can use install package with the multiple packages names and basically the, if you put several packages in the list, all of them will be installed. And furthermore, if you add the package version on the uh, on the inside the brackets here behind behind the package name, uh, the framework will try to get this particular version uh, from the GitHub repository. And uh, as I said, up to now, uh, the package the, the the first place for the storage of the the packages was also the place where the framework is stored but now now since since um september uh it's, it's it was changed and basically packages are stored separately in this saspack um saspack uh location here on the on the github so basically you are uh we have you have separate um, separate repositories for each package um, and then each package is stored here with the history of changes. So with this approach, you are able to to install uh, the packages, not not necessarily the latest one, but also the historical one. Uh, and I will, I will show you in a sec how you can uh, how you can do it. So uh, yeah, now let's let's play a little bit. Uh, we have a few minutes, so so I think I can. I can try to sh show you how it how it works uh, and how those changes here uh, presented here uh, works in the real life. Let me try to show you the stuff with the SAS Studio, uh, which I'm running on this uh, Soda server, SAS on demand for academics. Um, uh, and uh, let me show you that you are able to use SAS packages not only with the base SAS on DM with DMS or base SAS on the server through Enterprise Guide, you are also able to, to use it on, on VIA. Uh, of course, if you want to show me how to do it with base SAS or with the Enterprise Guide, we can do it, but that's not the, not the most uh, necessary thing. So basically, what I'm going to show you now, uh, this uh, this uh, SAS uh, studio connecting to to Soda. Uh, um, I have this packages uh, PCKG subfolder here in my home directory within which I'm already keeping the uh, framework and few packages. Uh, but uh, and also I have this uh, auto exec configured here that uh, whenever my session starts the uh, packages file is assigned to, to this particular PCKG folder, and then the, the framework is included. And then, since framework is included here in the second line, I'm able to use this load package uh, packages macro to load those five packages into my session. So I've got them from the start, right? But uh, 
what happened because I already have it. But what 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 if if there is like new version of the uh, of the uh, of the framework or or I want to download the latest version of 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 packages. So basically, I can use this install package with the SPF in it. This is the name of the of the framework. So if you want to install um, SAS packages framework from the internet inside this. Uh, packages folder uh, you just run install packages and the and spf in it that's the name when you run it you will see here in the log uh short summary uh right that uh, uh spf in it is is uh is, is downloaded uh here's the location from where the file is 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 extracted and here here at the end is information when it was um uh, loaded into and then the last line, if if the Earth's return code is zero, this means that everything was uh, done successfully, and you have the the file uh, installed. So basically, here in the in the PCKG folder, you've got it. You, you 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 couldn't see it. So let me do it one more time. Let me delete the file, uh, and let me let me run this line one more time. So you will see that the the file will be put it here. So yeah, we have it. We have it installed, uh, and when you want to install uh, um, several packages, you just put the list here in the install package uh, macro one more time. So I will here the original list was five, contained five five packages. I commented out GSM for for a sec, just to show you something else in the second. So let me run this one. We, sh we shall we will get four informations that that four packages were were installed uh, inside the uh, inside this folder let let's look at the at the one of them so basically uh, sql in the yes this is the place from which the the the, the, the package was downloaded so the sas pack repository um right since we already had this uh, packages downloaded there is a uh there is there is this note that the, the 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 file will be replaced, right? So basically, this this is the information that you already had a, a file with this package here in your location, but uh, it was replaced with the with the with the one downloaded, and this is the the latest version available in in inside the SAS pack repository. Uh, how to deal with the with the historical version? I will I will tell you in a sec. And the same for all 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 for reminding. Uh, all three reminding. So basically, we downloaded the, the 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 packages. We have them here, and now we can uh, go with this list packages uh, list packages uh, macro, which just which will print out uh, in the log the list of all available packages which you have uh, in in your session. Which means that basically it's scanning the 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 list of folders which are assigned to this packages file ref and checks uh, if there are packages. You can see here that uh, in this PCKG folder, uh, it found the uh, the five packages: macro array, SQL index, base plus, DFA, and GSM. Uh, and there is some basic information about those packages. So you see the version, author, maintainer, license type, um, and then one liner. Uh, what's this package about? Right. So now you know what you have in your session. But now the thing is that you want to extend this session because uh now that's that's the one more news um a few times ago some time ago uh alan um alan made this sas js core, SAS JS core um uh, macros uh available for sas js SAS JS server and he turned them into a SAS package. So basically, uh, now in, in, in the SAS pack repository, there are there, there is one additional um, uh, package pr provided by someone else than me. And uh, so we are <laughs> developing. So if you if you're interested in, in into sharing your own packages with, with other people and you want to make them public in, in official repository, just let me know and I will set up one for you here at the SAS pack. So we've got the SAS JS core uh, package with, with all those macros uh, uh, which, which Alan and the team uh, are building. And now basically what, what, what we want to do, we want to extend the, the list of, of uh, location within which the 
uh, the, 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 uh, our packages will be available. So I'm using extend packages file red uh, and I'm creating this new new uh, uh, file red with with this new location added here. So basically this SASJS core folder here, it's empty as you can see. Uh, and we we extending the, the list of available uh, location for packages. Let me run this. Uh, right, not too much information in the log, but when you list the packages uh, file ref, you will see that now we have two uh, two folders uh, to which the the file ref is pointing. And now when you inst when you run the install package, uh, and now uh, I want to run the install package for SAJS core macro, and I want to have it in particular version four point thirty three point zero. So basically, I'm adding the version name in the brackets here behind the name of the macro. And then I want to also install this GSM macro um, because I need like newer version. So basically I run the install package. And if you look here, uh, yeah, now the network is, is doing the job. Yeah, you can see right, one and the second. So basically here in the SASJ score file, file, you can see those two zips appeared with the, with the GSM package and the SASJ score package. And you can see here uh, the, the SASJ score with the particular version was extracted um, from the fast pack, but not from the uh, main uh, repository, but from the historical one with the particular version, and GSM was extracted with the with the latest repository, and bo both of them were were installed, uh, right? So here is the information that because the, the folder was empty, there were no no collisions, so the information is that the package was was installed here and here, and now uh, just to see what what package do we have now after installation. Uh, when you when you run this in the, the list package macro, you, you will see that in the first folder there are two two packages. First of all, is, the first one of them is the um, is the SASJS core. The second one is GSM, and then there's second repository with the packages. You can see here that the GSM is repeated, uh, but uh, basically the 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 load package macro, which which would uh, or, or help package which, which we will be calling to the to the GSM uh, macro will look for the first one uh, on the list of available localization. So basically, if if we if you see here one more time, uh, how, what what folders are available for the packages? So uh, the, the the framework will fill, first search for a particular package in the first folder. Then if 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 it's not find it here, then go for the second and so on so on so on. So when you when you run a help package for GSM. Uh, you you will get the information that. Uh, let me. Well, let me run it one more time. Yeah. Oh, now it's running. So you will get the information that the the the, the particular uh, uh, package which was which was used was the one from the from this uh, JS core. So the one that we just downloaded, right? So the first one on the list uh, of several. Uh, several localization localizations uh, and uh, I think I'm I'm not going to the discussion about the generate package today because uh, we we running out of time and it will be pointless to 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 jump on it very very fast so maybe we can set up another dedicated meeting for uh for discussion about the, the generate package macro uh, and I think uh I will stop at this moment i will say thank you very much for your patience and for joining me here on this on this meeting if you have any questions you want to discuss something you're interested interested in 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 developing your own, own package but you need some uh help or mentoring how to use it just let me know this email works all the time uh, so you, you can contact me if you forget the email if you forget the email you can just either contact alan and ask him for my email or alan you are permitted to, to share my email with anyone uh, or you can just go to through the to, to the linkedin and, and check it out over there or if you wish you can also go to sas communities and you can find me there under yabon so it shouldn't be any any problem uh if you're interested in some documentations for for the stuff here's the here's the slide with the with the links I think that's that's it. <laughs>
Thank you. Um, are there any questions? Um, not really, not really a question, but you, you know, just just uh, my comment. This is this is a great job, uh, honestly. I, I think this should be integrated in in, in SaaS itself. So, uh, uh, Camille, let, let me let me interrupt you for one sec. If you if you go to the SaaS package repository and you go to the uh, second paragraph, here is the initiative. Uh, if you click on the link, SaaS communities. There is the there is the uh, thread on communities open titled Add SaaS packages framework to uh, base SaaS or via. If you if you if you want, you can like it uh, and then uh, let let people. Know <laughs> all right, all right, I, I will. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We already have twenty seven upvotes, so it's I think it's it's quite good result. Right. So yeah, thank you and thank you for the for your comment. Um, it's really it's really it's really nice to to hear something like this. Uh, I've got one question. If there was um, a very quick overview or what would be the steps if a user had a, a macro library or a function library, how would they go about getting that added to SaaS packages? Uh, with macros, it's, it's almost trivial. Basically, the, the thing is that to build a package, let me let me show you the, the structure uh, for, 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 for example, package, which, which you, can, uh, you, can, you can check. Uh, structure goes like this. Uh, there are several types of, uh, of general codes, right? Like macros, functions, formats, libraries, and so on, data. So basically, if you have, uh, with macros, it's, it's really easy. Basically, if you have a macros, uh, you have to make it like you have in the SAS autos. One macro, one file, right? With the same name uh, and uh, with the lowercase letters. <laughs> but if you if you don't do it, the framework will tell you that you don't have lowercase letters in the name of the file. And basically, you put uh, the files into lib name uh, directory. Then you create uh, this description.sas file, which contains some some general information about the package, like the name, version, the author, and maintainers. Uh, some additional information about required components. For example, you, your packet package requires IML or graph to be working, right? So you can add it here uh, and some general description about the package. And, and, and uh, when, you, when you do it, basically you create this, 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 this folder containing the list of files with, with the macros and this one file, you just go to your code, you just write generate package, you point the location of the folder with, with, the, with the content uh, and, and, and just, Click run and it's done. So that's that's it. That's it. We did it with the with the with JS core, right? All, 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 all what we need to do was to move the files from this core setup to this. Uh, li, 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 the, the, sorry, it, I gave you. Uh, sorry, I gave you the wrong example. I click on the lead name. I was talking about macros. Uh, here, uh, here is. So basically, you put macros uh, into the folder and then. And then, then you 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 ready, right? Sorry, <laughs> I was talking about macros and showing you on the lib name example. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Yeah. So that's that's more more or less it, right? Any more questions from or comments from anyone in group? Yeah, no, no, another well, this one, this one will be a question. So I'm I'm wondering if maybe. Uh, because right now the the the, the, the macros use uh, the GitHub, uh, so you need to for, for installation, you need access to the internet. So this is mostly not the case in in any in any in a company. So I think uh, there should be able, you should be able to configure uh, uh, let's say a local repository of of, of those packages by administrator. Because, in fact. You know, I mean, in fact, you don't have to set up any, any repository because basically how it works, you are creating a folder, just whatever on the file system when user has access, you, 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 you uh, make a file, file, um, file name reference to that particular one. For example, like here, let me copy. Uh, let me copy those lines and I will, well, I will give you full answer. Uh, you are creating a folder. You are copying, just literally copying by copy paste 
the 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 file with the framework uh, and the, the packages you want to have on your machine. You and in your auto exec, you're adding file name with the with the file reference name packages pointing to that folder. You're adding one line with include for this SPF init.sas file here in this location. And basically, you've got your uh, your framework available for your for, for your session. And you can, if you want to have all, the, uh, if you want to have uh, part, any particular package loaded at the start of your session, you're just adding this load package to your auto exec, or you can you can just leave it leave it for users for 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 loading. So basically, uh, if you want to have the framework and the packages on your on your uh, environment, and you don't have access to the uh, internet from the environment, you can just do it by hand by copying. Because basically, the process of installation is is not nothing more than copying the source data from the GitHub to your local. So if you don't have this access uh, directly, you can you can basically go to to to, to 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 the GitHub on your local laptop, copy it, and then move it on the on the server, right? And, uh, All right. So, so if if it's working the that way, I see no problem here. Yeah, and and one more thing is that if you want to be sure that you are having valid. Uh, valid um, packages, uh, at least for all the packages I am providing. Uh, if you go to the, the the repository for a particular package, let's say macro array, you, you see their uh, file with the with the with the package, and then the macro array MD with the documentation for for this one. Uh, and if you scroll a few lines down, you will be able to find this uh, hash uh, digest of the of the file with the with the with the package. And if you Want to be sure that the package you put on your server is exactly the one which I provided here. You just copy this uh, this SS SHA two five six digest on your machine, and you just run something like this. Where was the verify package? Verify package. You need to put the package name. So let's say it was macro array, right? And then equals, and you take this this number from the web page, and when you run this one, you will get information in the log that yeah, you provided this value, the the that digest for the file you have on the server is this one. So basically, this is a valid uh, valid package. No one no one do anything with it inside right because uh, this 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 digest is generated at the moment when the pack package is, is generated so it's 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 using all the content from that particular moment even the information about the timestamp so whenever you change something in the file in the zip it will be modified and and when, when someone let's assume that now i put here like new ending it was seven and it's it's a so assume that this is correct one if you get the package uh and and you use the the the, the value and run it you will get information. Okay, something is not okay because the digest uh, you provided is like this, and the digest which I got from the file is like this. They are not the same. So basically, there's something wrong with this package or the digest. But assuming that the, the digest is provided by the developer, right? Uh, uh, that there's something happened with the package in the in the meantime, right? So that's that's more or less how we can verify it. Right. Also, a great feature. Great. You know, whenever I'm, I'm, I'm adding something to the to the framework, I think about it from from two point of view: the user, and the developer, right? So I want to have all the convenient feature for user and all the convenient feature for developer, right? So basically, I try to combine those two words, right, with, with, with one place. All right. Um, well. Thanks very much. It's been a really informative session. Um, so, uh, so yeah, I guess if anyone wants to get involved with or use the packages, it's all on github.com slash yabwon slash slash packages. Exactly. That's for the framework and for the for the for the repository repository dedicated directly for for the packages with the history and stuff like this. Just go to just go to saspack, right? So it's githubs.com slash saspack. And here is the repository of all the packages. 
Uh, of course, for for the you know, I'm I'm uh, SAS to the core, so I want to have backward compati comp compatibility to the very end. So all the historical packages, if they change, they will be also available on this old repository. But all the new one uh, will be will be added here. Thanks very much. <laughs>